Hey boys and girls, this week I thought it would be special if I spent a little bit of each day reading to you from one of our favorite series, The Magic Treehouse. So today we're going to be starting the book, Sunset of the Sabertooth. I'll give you a little hint about the chapter names like we always do on day one of a chapter book. Chapter one, the M things. Chapter two, bones. Chapter three, brrr. Chapter four, cave kids. Chapter five, snow tracks. Chapter six, song on the wind. Chapter seven, the sorcerer's gift. Chapter eight, the Great Parade, Chapter 9, Master of the Animals, and Chapter 10, This Age. Hmm. Okay, let's get to where we start. Ooh, and there's a picture on the first page. Chapter 1, The M Things. Let's go to the treehouse, said Annie. She and Jack were passing the Frog Creek Woods on their way home from their swimming class at the Y. No, I want to go home and change out of my bathing suit, said Jack. Oh, that'll take too long, said Annie. Don't you want to save Morgan as soon as possible? Of course, said Jack. Then come on, before the sun sets, said Annie. She darted into the woods. Jack sighed. He gave up on the idea of changing out of his bathing suit. He pushed his glasses into place. He followed Annie into the Frog Creek Woods. The warm air smelled fresh and green. He moved through patches of sunlight and shadow. Soon he came to a small clearing. He looked up. There it was, the magic tree house in the tallest tree in the woods. Hurry, called Annie. She climbed the rope ladder up the tree house. Jack grabbed the ladder and he started up after her. Finally, they reached the tree house. Squeak! A mouse sat on the windowsill. Hi, Peanut, cried Annie. Jack patted the tiny head of the little mouse. Sorry we didn't come any sooner, Annie said, but we had to go to our swimming lesson. Squeak! What happened while we were gone, said Annie, looking around the treehouse. Jack stared at the large M carved into the wooden floor. On the M were a moonstone and a mango, the special things they found on their last two journeys. Hey! Guess what, said Jack. Moonstone and mango start with M, just like Morgan. You're right, said Annie. I bet all four things start with an M, said Jack. Right, said Annie. I wonder where we'll find the next one. She and Jack stared at the stacks of books in the treehouse. Books on the Amazon rainforest, ninjas, pirates, mummies, knights, and dinosaurs. All of them were closed. Only one book lay open in the corner. We're just about to find out, said Jack. They walked over to the open book. They looked at the page. The book was open, too. It showed a picture of rocks and snow. Wow, said Annie, running her finger over the picture. I love snow. I wish we could go there right now. Wait, said Jack. We're not prepared. Then he had another thought. And we're wearing our bathing suits. Stop. Oops, said Annie. But it was too late. The wind started to blow. The leaves started to shake. The treehouse started to spin. And it spun fast, faster and faster. And then everything was still. And it was silent as the falling snow. And here's your picture from this page. I hope you can see it okay. Chapter 2, Bones. Jack, Annie, and Peanut looked outside. Snow was falling from the gray sky. The treehouse was in the tallest tree in the grove of the tall bear trees. The grove was on a wild white plain. Beyond the plains were high rocky cliffs. I'm c -c -c cold, said Annie. Her teeth chattered. She wrapped her towel tightly around her. Squeak! Peanut sounded cold too. Poor mouse, said Annie. I'll put you into Jack's pack. You'll be warmer there. Annie slipped Peanut into the pocket of the backpack. We have to go home, said Jack. We need warmer clothes. We can't go home, said Annie. We can't find the Pennsylvania book. Not until our mission is complete, remember? That's the way the magic works. Oh, right, said Jack. He looked around, but there was no sign of the Pennsylvania book that took always took them home. Annie peered out the window again. Where are we anyways, she asked. I'll find out, said Jack. He picked up the open book and read the title on the cover. Life, 
in the ice age. Ice age, said Annie. No wonder we're cold. We better find the third M thing soon, said Jack, before we freeze to death. Look, whispered Annie, people. She pointed out the window. Jack saw them too. Four figures on a cliff. Two big figures and two little ones, all holding long spears. Who are they, said Annie. I'll look in the book, said Jack. He found a picture of some people. He read the caption to Annie. Early modern humans were called Cro-Magnons. During the late ice age in Europe, they sometimes lived in caves beneath cliffs. Why are they carrying spears, said Annie. Jack turned the page. He found another picture of the Cro-Magnons and he read aloud. The Cro-Magnon family often hunted together. They covered deep pits with branches. Then they drove reminder they drove reindeer and mammoths into the traps. Oh, trapping the animals? That's sad, said Annie. No, it's not, said Jack. They couldn't live without hunting. They didn't have supermarkets, you know. They watched the family disappear over the other side of the cliff. Come on, I'm freezing, said Jack. Let's hurry and find the M thing while the Cro-Magnons are hunting. But I want to meet them, said Annie. Forget it, said Jack. They don't have books that tell them about us. They'll think we're an enemy and they'll hurl their spears at us. Yikes, said Annie. Jack put his book away. Squeak! Peanut peeked out of the backpack. Stay in there, said Annie. Jack pulled out his pack and started down the rope ladder. Annie followed. On the icy ground, they huddled together. The wind was biting. Aunt Jack put his towel over his head. Snow blew against his glasses. Remember, boys and girls, we sometimes talk about words that mean things that they don't sound like they mean. So remember when it says the wind was biting? We've talked about this before. We don't think the wind is actually biting and trying to get them, but it was so cold that it almost felt like that. So the wind was biting. Jack put his towel over his head. Snow blew against his glasses. Hey, Jack, said Annie, look at me. Annie had put her swimming goggles on. Now I can see, she said. Good thinking, said Jack. Now cover your head with your towel. Most of your body heat is lost through your head. Annie wrapped her towel around her head. We should find a cave or someplace warmer, said Jack. I bet there are caves in this cliffs, said Annie. She and Jack started across the white plain. The snow wasn't deep yet, but the wind was blowing hard. I told you, Annie pointed to an opening in the rocks. A cave. They ran to it. Careful, said Jack. They stepped carefully into the shadowy cave. It was only slightly warmer inside but at least the wind wasn't blowing. In the gray light, they stamped the snow off their sneakers. Annie took off her goggles. It smells in here, said Jack. Yeah, like a wet dog, said Annie. Let me see what I can find out, said Jack. He pulled out the Ice Age book. I'll look around, said Annie. Maybe the M thing is in here. Then we can go home and get warm. Jack stood by the entrance so he could read the book. This cave is filled with sticks, Annie said. What, said Jack? He didn't look up from the books. No, wait. I think they're bones, said Annie. Bones, echoed Jack. Yeah, lots of them back here, all over the floor. Jack turned the pages of his book and he found a picture of a cave filled with bones. I hear something, said Annie. Jack read the writing below the picture of the cave. It said, the great cave bears of the Ice Age were over eight feet tall. That's taller than Miss Connor for sure. These bears were larger and fiercer than today's grizzly bears. Their caves were filled with the bones of their ancestors. Annie, whispered Jack, get back here now. They were in the cave of a great cave bear. And that's where we're going to stop for today, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed it. Tomorrow's chapter starts with chapter three, and it's called Burr. So we will have to wait and see how that one turns out. I hope you enjoyed today's reading. Bye, guys.